Greg O'Gall. Hey, what's going on? Is Greg O'Gallagher with the Road Trip Podcast um, and Christopher Walker, and we got a fantastically special guest uh, today, and that is Sol Orwell of Examine.com, which is this amazing resource um, for for supplements. You can find out, you know, the different supplements um, that are helpful for the goal you have. And we're gonna get into that. And there's some really cool, interesting goals. Everything from uh, improving performance, enhancing strength, health, body composition, energy, um, you know, bedroom performance, um, and you know, maybe even like anxiety, studying, um, you know, memory, all that. It is fantastic. So, um, without further ado, uh, Sol, how is it going? Uh, it's going well. Uh, it's it's funny. I've known you now for like six months, and 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 you still pronounce my name Sol, even though it's Saul, like Solomon. But you know, one of these days, one of these days, you're gonna get it right, and everyone's gonna be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> you've just the first time you brought this up. You, I you never you <laughs> know what you should tell me. I, was, Sal. I swear to God, I've told you at least half a dozen times. It's Saul. 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 Okay, right. Like okay. the, like so we all move on. Yes. No, it's just it's the Canadian accent. That's so, right. Maybe that's it. I'm Canadian. Yeah. I pronounce it right. Yeah, you're Canadian. You've been Canadian it's, for like three years bad. now. You know, talk to me in twenty. I I I I'm I immigrated to Canada like sixteen years ago. I mean, I've left for like six of them, but still, you know, I've been here for ten years now. I'm kind of Canadian. Okay. Fair. Well, then you know what? With that, let's talk about the birth of Examine.com, which is this really awesome. Uh, website and resource on supplements. Um, so yeah, uh, basically my story is you know I, I term myself as the immigrant dream. You know I wasn't born in, in the West and, and I've lived in like Saudi Arabia and Japan and Pakistan and, and even in the States before I moved here for high school. And uh, basically while I was in high school, I started dabbling off on the internet. You know I made. Um, some websites, whatnot, and they started doing well. I went to university and I incorporated these websites in university. And, uh, you know, this kind of leads into my web dev background. And I have a computer engineering degree, but I can't actually call myself an engineer because I never actually practiced as one. So by the time I graduated, um, these businesses were doing pretty well. And I decided to leave Toronto and kind of travel because, you know, there was no physical office for me to stick with. So I lived in the States for a while. I was in Argentina. I was in Manhattan before I kind of came back to Toronto about four years ago now. And in that meantime, I kind of retired. Uh, I, I'm not wealthy or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, making a lot of money is not the appeal to me. I'd rather hang out in the park with my dog for an hour or two, just kind of watch the clouds roll by, read a book and whatnot. Um, so this isn't your dating profile? I'm, I'm explaining this. I'm getting to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any girls are listening, you know, I'll give you Soul's <laughs> number. Yeah. Just message me. You can go spend long walks on the beach. You know, Yo, Greg is always, out of always texting me things that I can't really talk about in public. <laughs> but, um, so, all right, when I got back to Toronto, I was pretty out of shape. And as I got in shape, you know, I had a lot of time, so I started researching about fitness, about health, you know, what works, what hormones, stuff like that. And I wrote a lot of this information down, kind of as notes. Now, as part of these forums, and the sad realization was, you know, there's a lot of smart people on a lot of forums, a lot of idiots too, but there are a lot of brilliant people. And all this information that they're talking about, you know, studying scientific papers or their own experience talking with, you know, uh, old pros and whatnot, this information kind of gets lost, right? I mean, once the forum post is two weeks old, one week old, a month old, no one really ever sees it again. And that's kind of where examine.com came out of, where I wanted to build a repository where we could save all this information so months down the road, you know, someone that keeps asking about, you know, creatine and caffeine, you know, or creatine and hair loss. And instead of having to answer the question over and over and again, you know, pull out the papers and, you know, search this stuff up, you just have a one single website to link to. And basically that's where Examine.com came out of. Uh, most of the primary research is done by Curtis Frank, and, you know, he has a, grad, uh, he has a degree in dietetics, so it's kind of his field. And my web dev background and uh, my retirement plays into the fact that, you know, we, we were never under a lot of pressure to make immediate money or anything like that. So we've been able to carve out our own niche in the meantime. And we've been doing it for two and a half years now. 
And uh, yeah, you know, we're doing pretty well. We have about 10,000 visitors a day. So, you know, we, we're we legitimate, I think, source of information on supplementation. And that's kind of what we are. You know what? You've been totally underselling yourself right here. Examine.com is just amazing. It's like a, it's, there's nothing like it. And all the big names in the industry totally are getting, you know, massive boners over it because it is, it is like there's nothing like it. And if you want to learn about supplements, I mean, you can go search through PubMed for hours and, and it takes a lot of time. Um, otherwise, you can go into examine. You can find the you can find the supplement or the health goal, and, and then from there, it's just like it's very clear, concise um, what this can do for you. And um, it, it is like you can spend some time on there. Um, I'm personally like not I'm not into taking buttloads of supplements, but definitely there's a few ones that are really cool. And I mean, we can get further um, into that with with Soul. So um, well, and part of the part of the whole um, like point of the website too is is like finding pretty easily what is effective and what isn't effective, you know. And that and that's where you guys like really just cut through a lot of the bullshit and um, you show like you know based on the actual literature, this is what we think is actually a valuable potential you know supplement for you to use in certain situations. So that's where the value I think. Really lies. Yeah, it's uh, it's been an evolution. Uh, if you go to archive.org to kind of look at uh, our original version of the website, it's 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 come a long way. Our internal revision is we're at like version six now, I think. So there's definitely been a progression towards making it much more accessible, making the information more uh, transparent. Um, honestly, though, beyond what Greg has said most kindly, I really don't have much to add. Uh, Thank you is all I can say is, like I said, you know, we're trying to carve out our own niche. We're trying to make sense of, uh, of bullshit that is out there about supplements. And I think the reality is that a lot of the common ones are useless or not very useful. You know, tribulus or glutamine, glucosamine, popular ones, they don't really work. Whereas you have some really cool supplements like berberine and spirulina and, you know, upcoming ones like agmatine that don't get a lot of attention but are actually you know, potent or have a lot of uh, potential in being effective. So, you know, we're trying to bring that out. Well, let's talk about those three right now because um, I, I have heard about those, but I'm not really sure um, their uses. So uh, let's start with berber, uh, berberpine, for example. So berberine's uh, kind of badass in the sense that it is extremely effective at controlling blood glucose levels. So the people who really love it are diabetics. You know, basically with your largest carb meal that you have, if you have carbs, you ingest berberine and, you know, it helps control that problem. Uh, I have a really good friend who's a diabetic and I swear to God, once a week he texts me or messages me saying how awesome berberine is. Like, mm -hmm. I'll say like, yo, Ryan, I know what you're talking about. It's awesome, yes, but he will not give up. Just, I don't know what he's trying to convince me about, but mm -hmm. uh, berberine is actually really cool. Um, the other thing about berberine is that it's, uh, the the prescription drug, the most popular one for diabetics is metformin, metformin, sorry, and berberine is pretty much as potent as that. So it kind of shows that you know supplements have have a point. You kind of have to look at them in a targeted way. If they fit your lifestyle, if they fit your health goals, um, you know they can be a great boom. So that's berberine. Uh, the other one I was mentioning was spirulina. Spirulina is like an algae. It's uh, it's something that hippies love. But it's actually really cool as kind of like a band-aid. It covers a lot of bases, especially if you are a middle-aged uh, middle-aged person. Uh, spirulina is actually a really nice thing to look into. I'm assuming not a lot of people watching this are middle-aged, but I'm sure they have parents and whatnot, and it would behoove them to look into spirulina for you know their parents' usage or anybody else they know that might be in their 40s or 50s and you know isn't as young as they used to be. And the last one I mentioned, agmatine, it's uh, it's really interesting for the pump. Uh, for the what? Know, for the pump. People oh, take okay. arginine and citrulline for the pump, you know, as an NO booster and whatnot. But even though there's not a lot of evidence for it just yet, agmatine has the potential to be far more uh, potent and uh, pumpy, if you wish, than either of those two I just mentioned. And is there any advantage to get taking supplements to get that, that pump? Does it have any influence uh, on them for there's, muscle there's growth? No advantage. I mean, really, it's kind of the way I always approach supplementation is, you know, if it helps you achieve your goals, even if it's almost placebo-like, then, you know, that's good enough. Uh, you know, 
let's not kid ourselves. We like getting the pump. You like seeing, you know, the vascularity and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, it feels nice. So if Agmatine gets you there, it makes you lift harder, it makes you lift when you might not have done it otherwise, you know, I think that's kind of a win right there already for it. So I think it's an interesting one. I'll admit there's not a lot of evidence for it yet, but it points in a very positive manner. Okay, interesting. So those are three um, very uh, unique supplements. So I guess um, now let's really talk about um, a handful of supplements that like work and that are highly beneficial. Um, and for example, which is like the one supplement that you think that like you know um, the most important supplement uh, to take? What would that be? Uh, it's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, do a push on that and kind of cheat. Uh, the reality is is that our diets are pretty crappy. Uh, you know, pollution in the sun makes vitamin D, for example, harder for our bodies to make, right? I mean, uh, we're scattering the sun's rays with smog and whatnot, and, and it is what it is. So if you're, you know, if you live near the equator, then you don't really need vitamin D if you're outside enough. But, you know, Greg and I were in Toronto. We, you know, it's overcast for quite a lot, especially in the wintertime, so vitamin D basically becomes a must. Um, another one is vitamin K, actually, I think, you know, vitamin D has got a lot of attention the past few years about how important it is, and I'm pretty sure vitamin K is kind of going to be the next one. Um, vitamin K is one of those uh, ones that's almost impossible to get via your diet. Uh, kale is like the big source for it, but if you actually eat kale, it doesn't work because the jam, cellulose, and all that, so you actually have to blend it. So vitamin K supplementation is useful. Uh, and the one I actually make my mom take, and I tell this to everybody, is creatine. Uh, basically, creatine's got no downside. Uh, it's really powerful if you're vegetarian. You know, it's more of a, it's basically raw energy for your cell. So it helps your cells uh, maintain themselves. It can help you neurologically. And, you know, all these supplements like vitamin D, vitamin K, and creatine, they're really cheap. Uh, you know, when you have like 10 cents a day or 15 cents a day, I mean, we do actually lose sleep over it if, even if it doesn't work. So, you know, those are the three that I tend yeah, and, to... And that's creatine monohydrate, not the creocline or... Yeah, you really don't need the other versions of creatine. I mean, just take it, mix it in water, and drink some water, and you'll be fine. I mean, there are people who don't, and they get diarrhea, and you just kind of shake your head saying, like, buddy, just just drink some water. It's not that it's not that complicated. So that's, that's like, an interesting way to... Mo most of what I hear about uh, creatine supplementation is, is for, um, like... You know, lifting. And you're you're recommending it more um, as a, just a dietary supplement. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you if your body can't metabolize creatine, that's actually a genetic uh, condition condition. Uh, sorry, genetic fault, and it causes mental retardation. So creatine is actually pretty critical for your body. Uh, you know, vegetarians tend to be low in it because they don't eat meat and all that. But there's a lot of evidence that if you can saturate with creatine, it, I mean, like I said, it's basically a raw energy. It, it you know helps with ATP process in your body. And if your cells are deprived of energy, they basically die or get corrupted or whatnot. I mean, I'm simplifying here to a level, you know, but the basic truth is there. And so if your cell is in a state of deficit energy, deficit energy, and creatine can help it, you know, eke out that extra little bit until it can get energy, well, you know, then the cell survives. Um, so that's kind of why creatine is actually awesome. I mean, yeah, it lets you lift more, but it's more than just lift that. It's more than just letting you lift more. It's almost like the secondary mechanism of giving you more energy in your cells. And what about um, uh, like dosages for that? Do, do the uh, dosage guidelines on the uh, you know standard packages are, are those what you should look for, or do you do you recommend like a certain type? Yeah, well, they, you know, there's all like the creatine loading and all yeah, that stuff. yeah. I mean, basically, the creatine works because. Uh, you know, it's in your body, and so you load, your, your body gets saturated, and then you don't need as much to kind of maintain that saturation. Do you need to load? No. Uh, is there any harm in loading? No. Uh, you basically need like two to five grams a day. Uh, you know, the more endurance you do, then obviously the more creatine you're using up, and therefore you need more of it. But again, I mean, you know, if you take five grams instead of three grams, we're talking about four cents extra a day or three cents extra a day, and I mean, are you really going to be worried about those five, you know, a nickel a day kind of thing? So I usually tend to just say, you know, go with the five grams and don't worry about it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like bothering with pills or cycling or anything like that, it's not needed. Just take monohydrated, throw it in water. If you take a shake at any time, just throw it in your shake. Just chug it with that. My mom makes, you know, she loves fruit smoothies. She's got a little blender 
her little fruits that she throws it and blends them. So I kind of put creatine in there and that. I mean, she doesn't know this. She complains to me about it, but then she takes it. And I read some interesting uh, stuff on creatine that it can uh, improve uh, short-term memory um, and it might have an influence on testosterone. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, okay, so creatine can help with uh, neurological aspects because, you know, it is, again, uh, cell energy. Uh, so we wrote an article on T Nation about that. If you search for like, new uses of creatine T Nation, uh, you know, there's like four or five, six different things we talk about where it's applicable in research. Um, and, I mean, you know, when we wrote that in the beginning of the year, I think it had been two months in, there were still like 20 new papers published on creatine in those first two months. And that was outside of performance athletics and whatnot. So creatine is actually a really interesting one, which is why I kind of blindly recommend it. Um, sorry, what was your other thing? I Testosterone. I heard, I, I read some studies that it can... Yeah, so, okay. Basically, uh, creatine has been implicated in one study of increasing DHT. And DHT has been linked with, you know, higher DHT has been linked with higher sex drive and also hair loss. Um, the actual link between creatine and hair loss has not really been proven. It's one of those, you know, A causes B, B causes C, so it could do it. But really, at the end of the day, I mean, if you are prone to losing hair, creatine might make it slightly sooner than later. Uh, I, I've been taking it for a while. I have very luscious, very soft, beautiful hair. So <laughs> I, I can attest to that fact. If you're listening to the iTunes podcast, I can, uh, it does have luscious hair. Yeah, you know, it's like my beard. It's quite thick and nice. And, you know, I've had no problems. So it's one of those, you know, it could do it, but will it really have, you know, a significant effect on that? Not really. It's, it's, again, one of those, like, where, you know, people major in the minors, like, it's a 1% or 2% different. If you want to worry about that, sure. But unless you're, like, a Mr. Olympia athlete or a sports, you know, athlete, like, it's not worth bothering with, to be honest. And, and so, in regards to creatine, um, what are your thoughts on, uh, like, say, teenagers and people uh, that want to use creatine? Should they wait, for example, till they're 18 or 20 before starting to take it? Or is it all right to take if they're 15, 16? Uh, we've actually, uh, I mean, this is where I go with the disclaimer where, you know, if you're under 18, parents and all that kind of stuff, but uh, we actually wrote an article about uh, creatine usage in youth athletes, and, and there's been quite a few studies, and it's shown no problems whatsoever. I mean, again, right, you're already getting it with meat. You literally have to eat, I think it was two pounds of red meat a day or four pounds of white meat a day to get to it. So Chris it's does that. Like, what's that? Chris does that. Well, yeah. uh, Chris, I had three, three today, down. three pounds of meat. You don't need to worry about your creatine levels at all. But, you know, I mean, again, it's it's something we're eating in food anyway every single day. Uh, so, you know, there were studies done, and it showed no problem. I mean, I'm not going to go out and say, hey, you take creatine, but if you take it, like, there literally should not be a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've been actually, I've taken creatine a few times. I've actually never really stuck with it, with it um, but... I've always been waiting to like hit a plateau in my routine before taking creatine to help bust through that. But you know, I've just I haven't hit that point yet. So um, maybe I'll start taking it for like the for the other benefits of it for the cell. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's cheap. It's effective. It's it's tasteless. You ever take stuff like leucine, you will gag on it. So you know, you take it cool. You don't take it cool. Uh, it's not one of those. Critical vitamin D, vitamin K, critical, but, you know, take creatine if you want. Don't and is there, is there a best time of day to take creatine, like before workout or after workout, or it doesn't even matter? Uh, no, I don't know why people obsess over that or carbs. I mean, again, people are making this way too complicated. It's going to saturate your body. Saturation doesn't matter if you take it before you go to bed, if you take it right after you wake up. Just take it in a consistent manner. Again, like, you know, my mom takes it with her blended uh, shakes. I take it with a protein shake I take in, in the afternoon. Done. And just keep it simple, stupid. There's no reason to stress out about that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. And so one thing I want to talk to you about um, is, you know, a lot of people recommend multivitamin mineral formulas. Um, do you think it's just crap, or do you think it actually has its place? Uh, our, our, let's say, official policy on multivitamins is that it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a waste of money because it's one of those band-aids, you're just kind of doing, you know, shotgun approach and you're hoping something is missing or something's not missing. Uh, the reality is that multivitamins kind of don't know what your diet is like, they don't know what you're deficient in. And the other reality is, you know, there's a physical constraint, right? You get the animal pack, multivitamins or that kind of stuff, you know, it's like 10 pills at one time. So you get a centrum or whatnot, which is this one pill, the question immediately arises, you know, how much can they put in there anyway? 
And usually, you know, they, they fill it with stuff like vitamin C and iron, which you're getting enough of anyway from your diet usually. So it, it, in terms of actual usage, I mean, I'm not a big fan of it. Again, if you're taking it, I'm not going to say, you know, stop. Uh, but I really don't see the need. Uh, you know, most deficiencies for people are magnesium because they're not getting enough through diet, vitamin K because it's hard. Um, you know, sometimes zinc, if you sweat a lot, zinc, uh, you know, you deplete that. Uh, otherwise, in general, you know, honestly, if you eat your veggies, if you eat your meats, if you eat your fruits, whatever, you know, uh, you don't really need to worry about multivitamins. Right. I actually, yeah, I'm actually very fond of, uh, they have the, in my, like, in most supplement stores, grocery stores, they have, like, this uh, bone formula, which is zinc, magnesium, and calcium. And right. those are three ones, like, like, zinc, if you eat meat, you get enough, but, like, calcium and magnesium can be, you know, you can get deficient if you don't have dairy and uh, if... Uh, and magnesium is kind of hard to get, so. Yeah, I mean, and calcium goes really well with, excuse me, vitamin K, actually. Uh, it's really good for bones and all that. So, yeah, you know, I mean, I take a ZMA just because I'm lazy. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a hairy brown dude. I sweat kind of too much. <laughs> but, you know, again, it's it's kind of the cost effectiveness. You know, I spend six bucks for, what is a one month or two month supply. Am I getting maybe too much zinc? That's fine. I mean, yeah, you know, people say, oh, you, you know, you're, you're, you have very expensive urine. But really, if... <laughs> if my urine is worth five bucks a month, you know, I'm okay with that. I'd rather take, you know, hedge my bets. So, yeah, I mean, ZMA is cool. Calcium, I don't take because I love my milk and my cereal and whatnot. But, yeah, I mean, calcium, vitamin K, ZMA, that's all good, man. I agree okay. with that. Cool. Let's uh, maybe transition. Um, well, I guess the one last main supplement that is uh, obviously, like, you know, flat across the board, touted, is, is fish oils and, you know, getting enough um, EPA, DHA, omega-3s. Right. Um, in your diet, um, is there a strong need for, for fish oil supplementation? If I don't eat any fish and I'm not taking fish oil, is all of a sudden if I supplement fish oil, I'm going to become a lot healthier and and better? Like, what's your what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, if so, I personally don't take fish oil because I eat fatty fish a few times a week, which is really all you need. Uh, I love my smoked salmon, but only <laughs> what's that? We're not, we're not talking about the bedroom soul. Yo, smoke you. <laughs> Kyle. Anywho. Sorry. So you eat salmon? Okay, got you. Uh, I love my smoked salmon, but only Pacific or Arctic. <laughs> that Atlantic shit is nasty. I'm gonna. I'm powering through you guys. I'm. I'm, I'm in my 30s now. I'm just gonna ignore you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if you don't eat fish, uh, fresh fish, uh, you you should take uh, fish oil. Uh, basically, uh, the gist of it is there are omega threes, which is what you know EPA DHA is, and then there's omega sixes, which is what's found in red meat. Uh, and basically, we tend to err towards a lot of omega sixes. We don't really get a lot of omega threes. So balancing that ratio is generally pretty important. Um, you know, it's one of those where if you have too much omega threes, too little omega threes, too much omega six, too little omega uh, six. You know, it's it's all pretty bad. So taking fish oil is a way of just kind of recalibrating that ratio. So I mean, if you don't take, uh, if you don't eat fish at all, sure take it. Uh, I would recommend taking it. But again, it's one of those. You know, I eat fatty fish once or twice a week. So if you miss your fish oil one day, you're not going to die. It's not going to be the world's worst thing. Uh, and anecdotally, a lot of people do say, because uh, fish oil can help with inflammation, again, with inside the ratio of N3s to N6s. So uh, anecdotally, people say it helps them with their joints and whatnot. Um, but, you know, I don't know if that's a, it's more of a situation as you grow older or whatnot. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of our, our – we're a little bit more conservative on fish oil than most people. Um, I'm interested, too. Oh, I've all, yeah, I've also heard that, like, you know, fish – a lot of people – Anecdotally, report that fish oil improves their mood, improves their concentration. Um, fish oil could quite, be. Uh, I've, had, I've had an improvement in my skin with fish oil. You know what? Maybe again, it could be because you're eating that three pounds of beef and all that. Maybe that's why, right? And three is a little bit off. But uh, yeah. fish oil is actually quite uh, is is proven to help with depression. Uh, it doesn't fix major depression. You know, the ones that you need actually uh, antidepressants on. But vitamin D and uh, Vitamin D more because of seasonal uh, mood disorder, you know, where it's like cloudy, overcast, you kind of feel like shit, you kind of feel down. But fish oil can definitely also help 
with depression. But it's one of those things right, where I was talking about, uh, you know, supplementation, the general kind of stuff that people talk about, you know, we're going to build muscles with glutamine, that's usually garbage. But in targeted situations, supplements can be actually pretty damn awesome. Cool. And what, um, I know, Greg, you wanted to shift gears a little bit. Before we do that, what uh, would you say was the most useless supplement that you you've run across that people basically like buy in droves. There, there's, you know, there are a ton of supplements that you can walk into Walmart and they have like very cheap versions of them. Um, yeah. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ignore the like vitamin C and stuff like that. I honestly don't know why people buy that because, you know, literally you have just a little bit of leafy greens and boom, you know, you hit your vitamin C quotient. You, know, you take one of those hauls and all that, they have enough vitamin C to last you a week. So I'm gonna ignore those. Uh, the easy ones for us especially is glutamine. Uh, glutamine is, I think last time I read, it's like $600 million a year of business. So absolutely mind-boggling because, uh, so historically what basically happened was, you know, they took muscle cells, they put them in a PP dish, they threw glutamine at it, and boom, they exploded, right? Muscle protein synthesis was up, you know, the muscle cells were huge, amazing things. What happens in the real world is when you take glutamine, your intestines and your liver love glutamine, so they don't actually ever let it get to your muscles. So uh, unless you're injecting glutamine somehow straight into your muscles, basically your intestines are saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, the only time glutamine actually does work is if you have a severe deficiency. And the most common time you get a severe deficiency is if you have serious burns on your body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, MDs will use glutamine for serious burn victims. But other than that, I mean, glutamine is, I mean, it's an amino acid. You have some protein and you'll easily hit your glutamine minimum, right? You hit the RDA and you'll be fine. So I, I would say for our context in terms of, you know, looking good and all that kind of stuff, uh, glutamine is definitely a useless supplement. All right. All right. Well, so let's say that you're, you know, covering your uh, basis with, you know, vitamin D, vitamin K, um, creatine, maybe a magnesium supplement, and potentially you're getting in your your fish oils either through fatty fish or through uh, supplementation form. Um, I guess we can talk about specific health goals. Um, I guess let's start with um, fat loss. Are there any additional supplements uh, to take that can really enhance fat loss or that can help you know, with the diet and blunting appetite or boosting metabolism? Um, what are your thoughts? Uh, so, so there's two parts to that. One is the rules kind of change when you are obese. Uh, versus when you are lean, right? So stuff that may work when you are more obese, when you're carrying heavier weight, a lot more fat, you know, 30% plus body fat, doesn't always translate when you're, in, when you're lean. And one of the best examples of that is 5-HTP, which Dr. Oz recommends. Dr. Oz, that dude. But, you know, he recommends 5-HTP, which uh, helps blunt your appetite. Uh, but the beauty of the way it makes, you know, blunt your appetite is, is it induces nausea. So you become so nauseous that you cannot ingest food. And when you reach that level, it's much more effective in, you know, obese people who have much more fat stores and all that to burn than lean people. Um, so, you know, there are these little things that are potentially effective when you're very obese. But, I mean, when you're also at that level, if you're 30% body fat, I mean, you know, watching what you're eating does a lot more than any fat burner will ever do. And so in that context, to be honest, the most effective fat burner, you could say, is uh, caffeine and ephedrine, if you take it with it. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, you can get it as bronchate in the States, basically, and it's still completely legal in Canada. You know, you can't export it to the States. You, like, there's people who have been arrested for exporting ephedrine to Jesus. the States from Canada. Uh, but the thing with caffeine is caffeine only works if you're not used to it. Right. So if you drink coffee, you drink tea occasionally, or I'm sorry, frequently, caffeine is already failing you right there. And you know, you have to be naive where basically it jacks up your adrenaline, which is what causes the fat burning in it to work. But then after a few days, it loses its efficacy already, right? Which is kind of when people do the EC stack with ephedrine and caffeine. You know, usually you cycle it for two to four weeks, and you kind of cycle off because you need to rebuild up that tolerance of caffeine. And you're also taking 600 milligrams of caffeine a day, which is just a lot. And it's not so, easy to cycle off caffeine either. No, no, it's vicious headaches and all that kind of, un, you know, very uncomfortable shit. I mean, people try to stop taking coffee and they struggle, right? And coffee's like 50 to 100 milligrams, right? And you're talking about 600 milligrams, your body's like, holy shit, what's going on? So with all that said, I mean, basically, unfortunately, no. There's nothing 
you know, a fat burn increases your metabolism by like 5%. You know, so if you're losing uh, 10 pounds, you know, what is 5%? It's not even one pound, right? So, I mean, I, I tested out, I, I played around with EC, and I mean, the one thing I can say with it, it for, with EC is just that I had like a six year old girl's appetite. I. But I have, like, my appetite just I don't know why you know what a six-year-old girl's appetite is like. I'm really not going to question that, but you know whatever. No, you know. But, but but that but that only lasted for a couple of weeks, and then then it kind of then it goes back to normal, you know. Exactly right. So you have to recycle yeah. and all that. So it works in that. I mean, see, like the fat burning is all secondary, right? Essentially, it limits your appetite, which means you eat less, and therefore you burn more fat, right? Same thing with 5-HTP. In actual fat burning, I mean, you got to go to drugs like clenbuterol and DNP and you know, I would not recommend those. DNP especially is like a thermonuclear bomb in your mitochondria. If you mess it up by 10 to 15 percent, you can literally die. I mean, people will go out in the freezing cold after having taken DNP, and they can literally be just wearing a T-shirt, and it could be snowing, and they won't feel it. Um, so yeah, it works, but it's one of those things that I would never, ever, ever, ever touch. So okay. you know, that's kind of the situation. Um, what about? I'm curious. I, when when we had Rusty on the show, Rusty Moore, uh, I think it was after we stopped recording, uh, we brought he brought up the uh, the um, uh, efficacy of nicotine in right. in, in the form of uh, the gum. Yes. And I, I've never tried it. Um, I'm curious if you know anything about that. Basically, so the gist of caffeine and nicotine and yohimbine and all of these. I mean, if I really simplify them, essentially they they jack up your adrenaline and that adrenaline is what's causing your uh, fat cells to be burnt faster. Uh, so nicotine kind of has the same problem as caffeine does. You know, it'll work for a little bit of time. More than anything else, actually, nicotine has a lot of potential as a nootropic. Uh, it has a lot of potential to boost your ability to focus and stuff like that. Um, but again, these are things that will help you for a week, maybe two weeks, mm -hmm. but after that they lose their efficiency and then you have to go off them and honestly, I think the, the fat burning they give you is not worth the cravings or the withdrawal headaches you get out of them. So, you know, that's why I kind of don't generally recommend them. Yeah, and, and this is actually a good uh, shift. We could talk about nootropics a little bit. I, um, yeah. You know, in college, one of the things I did, I took a history class for like a, uh, you know, a social studies credit or something, and, and we did uh, the history of tobacco and, and how it was... Uh, Considered, you know, right when it was first exported from the states to um, to Europe, it was considered the thinking man's drug because they um, they immediately noticed the potency in terms of uh, like the extra brain power that they had. No, no, no. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, nootropics are really interesting. One one like I mean, the race tams are a big part of nootropics, and what's interesting about race tams are they are, you know, pharma pharmaceutically made. They are, an, let's say, quote unquote, artificial uh, molecule. And there's the basic race time, and then you, they've been modifying, you know, on a race time, ox race time, all those. They're based on the original race time, and <clears throat> you know, it's all to kind of play around in your brain, some help with focus, some help with memory. The one thing about race times is that uh, the FDA just recently, and I don't have the full details on it yet, but they've put out a notice that they're going to investigate claims that are going on with race times. Oh. So I don't know if that means they're going to kind of become more heavy-handed with it, kind of like, you know, Yohimbine or Ephedrin, for example, in the States, or if they're more of a, a, a marketing warning where they're saying, you know, you need to calm down on the claims you're making. Yeah. Um, I can say that, you know, nicotine, if we, if, sorry, if I just look that up really quickly. But, I mean, nicotine can help with alertness. Uh, Bacopa is pretty fantastic for uh, memory, right? I mean, nicotine can help with anxiety, cognition, memory, stuff like that, even reaction time. Uh, it's not going to help a lot, to be honest. I mean, it's not like you are suddenly Einstein from, you know, your regular self. But just like, you know, we're talking about caffeine can give you that minor boost in fat burning, which usually is irrelevant in the long term. Whereas, you know, these things could give you a boost in, you know, your ability to focus and, and retain information, whatever, and they could be really useful. You know, if you're studying, you got to get through work. I mean, the world's most famous nootropic is caffeine. Right? I mean, that's what it is, right? I mean, it stimulates you. People use it as an anti-sleep agent and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I mean, nootropics are really interesting. There's a lot of research coming out on that. Uh, if you go to longecity.org, like the Longy City, 
Uh, it's a lot of anecdotal reports on nootropics. People do crazy stacks. If you search for Reddit nootropics, you know, same thing. People are talking about the latest research. They're talking about their own anecdotal stuff. So we're still at the at the stage where we can't say much conclusively either which way. But yeah. there's a lot of interesting, you know, uh, uh, anecdotes out there, and uh, you know, it's definitely worth looking into. I mean, it's hot. If you look at Google Trends and you see how they're searching nootropics, that shit is exploding. So. Yeah. It's an interesting thing to look into. Yeah, I'm, and I, I just like seeing, just watch, you know, watching the trend happen. Um, I, I've seen like t uh, kind of a. I think there's going to be a split in terms of um, like two classes of biohackers or biohacking or whatever. Right. Where where it's kind of like there's like true biohacking that stays more uh, stays truer to the actual term of like you know like hacking in in the more of the uh, computational sense where you you have these like diehards who spend tons of time really, really understanding a system to the point where you can like find manipulation points, and then they calculate like they possibly themselves. yeah, yeah. And then there's like on the other uh, hand is uh, what I what I see is like band aid biohacking. Like you, you brought up the term band aid before, you know, where it's it's like oh let's you know pop some smart drugs and like see what happens. Which I, uh, there's ne neither one is right or wrong, but I think that's kind of what's going to happen in in terms of like a big split uh, between two parties of this biohacking trend. Yeah, I mean, there's a quantified selfers are pretty hardcore about measuring their stuff. I mean, Seth Roberts is one of the biggest guys there, and you know, he talks about his vitamin D intake, and he increased it 2,000 U's, and he measured his awakeness and how good he felt and how much he slept and all that. And you know, they have a ton of data. They'll admit it's n equals one. It's just them, but it's interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, you know, I'll I'll even admit if I if I get a headache, I take glucosidine, which helps with which is supposed to lower blood pressure a little bit in the brain, and I feel like it works. I mean, again, it's one of the things where it could be placebo, and I'll greatly admit it. But you know, there is some research that indicates that, it, like I said, it's decreasing blood pressure in, in in your head, which can help alleviate headaches and whatnot. And I take it, and that's my solution, right? Instead of you know, that's my band aid solution. Instead of taking an ibuprofen or or taking a nap or a shower or whatever you know people's solutions are, that is part of my solution. And so yeah, I mean I think it's really interesting. It's one of those things where you know play around with it. It's not a cheap thing, unfortunately, yeah. but uh, I don't think it's you know prohibitively expensive. So hell's yeah, I, I, I would definitely recommend trying it out. Yeah, the Copa, I, the Copa sounds pretty interesting. Seems like yeah, it the Copa is one of those. Uh, uh, and so that's kind of also the schism, right? Where we have we have the race temps, which are kind of new and being engineered, and there's new versions of it all the time. And you kind of have the classical ones, you know, from traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurvedic medicine, you know, bacopa and stuff like that, which, you know, they knew. I mean, you know, they used to chew on coca leaves, right? And, and they get a little buzz, and that was the alertness, and that was a form of nootropics for them. So, you know, there's those things that also work, and bacopa actually has a decent amount of research on it. Uh, you know, if you want to look at nootropics, bacopa, I think, would be the one to start off with before you start exploring anything else. Right. And it, it, I also read that it can help with... Um help with uh, anxiety. It's an anti-anxiety agent too? Yeah, I mean there's, uh, I'm just gonna, it's one of those things where as an engineer I was taught if you don't need to remember anything, don't ever remember it, just look it up when you need it. So uh, yeah, I mean uh, there's quite a few things which could potentially help you with your anxiety. But Copa's like famous or infamous one is memory because it actually supposedly have a, has a notable effect on it and there's a lot of evidence. Uh, you know, it's supposed to help with anxiety and depression and that kind of stuff, just a little bit, you know, just like kind of alcohol does too. Um, but again, it depends on, on each person. Like some people are a little bit more sensitive to that kind of stuff, and that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. So, you know, I, I enjoy the idea of biohacking. I'll admit I don't take that many supplements myself considering <laughs> what I run and what I own, but it's it's really interesting, and you know, I always recommend people try themselves out. I mean, you know, this is your health. If you can make it a little bit better for yourself, damn straight, why not? For sure. Um, and what are your thoughts on, for example, uh, testosterone boosters? So the fun thing about testosterone is if my testosterone is up, I likely have higher libido. You know, I feel hornier. That is kind of usually the relationship. And the reality is almost all the testosterone boosters out there today are libido boosters. And libido boosting has not much to do with actual testosterone boosting. So, you know, if you take something like Trib and, you know, you feel like, oh, man, you know, I need, I need to go to the club, I need to go to a bar, and I need to get it done, and you feel like, oh, my testosterone levels are up, but no, it's not. Uh, testosterone is, is, there's no 
the thing with it right now is there's no human evidence of any testosterone booster that really works. You know, d aspartic acid has potential, but there's very little research on it still. And anecdotally, also, it does, you know, enlarge your scrotum and your testes. If, if that's something you're looking for, if you wanna, if you wanna carry that around. Um, but the interesting thing about testosterone boosters is there's a lot of animal studies out there that are very interesting. Like you look at bovine and, and it increased testosterone like four or five hundred percent. There's no human evidence. And there's a lot of times where rat studies and animal studies, which seem really awesome and cool, kind of failed in the face of human studies. But there's potential. At the same time, there's actually no, uh, you know, proven testosterone boosters that are nutraceuticals. I mean, you know, you could take you know, pres prescription testosterone anabolic stuff like that. They work, but they have their own, you know, bunch of headaches that come along with it. You got to worry about your estrogen levels and that kind of stuff. And I honestly don't know enough about it to recommend it either which way. Right. So it's crazy because the testosterone boosting um, supplement industry that, that's like a that's a heavy market like like ton of people are probably wasting dollars and dollars feeling horny as crap They're like damn my testosterone is through the roof yeah yeah and the testosterone is unchanged <laughs> they feel like a boss the other thing though uh, I will say is that you know testosterone can be pretty sensitive uh, if you don't get enough sleep your testosterone can fall if you're deficient in zinc your testosterone can fall. You know, even vitamin D deficiency can cause a uh, drop in testosterone. So what happens, you know, people have piss poor sleeping habits and stuff like that, and then take vitamin D supplementation, they suddenly feel, again, stronger, healthier, whatever, right? And so what's happening is, yeah, it boosted your testosterone, but it just boosted it back to where it should be. You know, it boosted you whatever your average was. So, I mean, those work in that way. You look at a lot of testosterone boosters, they tend to have zinc just because, you know, people aren't eating their leafy greens, so they're deficient in zinc. And so, I mean, that works on a technicality, but really it's just taking you back to where you should have been right. anyway. And, and it's crazy because, like, there are guys, like, spending hundreds of dollars or more, way more a month, and they're drinking, like, ten beers a night on the weekend. It's yeah. like, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah, that's too. I mean, you know, if, if you're tanking on alcohol, you're sleeping four or five hours a night, I mean, supplements are not the solution even remotely at that time. The solution yeah. is to pick that stuff up and then worry about everything else after. Right. Well, usually that, uh, you know, lifestyle changes will take care of everything for you in terms yeah. of your, it, basically everything you need. It's you know? the principle, right? You, you take care of 80% and then that 20% can be your leeway if you want to supplement it out, if you want not. I mean, you know, no one's perfect. So this, this chasing of testosterone boosting when you can't even sleep, right? I mean, and sleep's awesome. Sleep is literally freaking awesome, you know? Boost your muscle. It does everything for you. Sleep is literally the shit. The best supplement in the world. So if you can't even find time to sleep, yeah, you shouldn't really be worrying about supplements that much. And it does it yeah. does it matter what time you sleep? You know, some people say like, you know, well, if you if you uh, fall asleep before twelve, then it's worth like two hours or some nonsense like that. Uh, I think I think the reality about that is sleep is very sensitive. Uh, there's a you know you could fall asleep or not fall asleep easily, but there's also sleep quality. Right? I mean, it, you don't want stimuli when you're asleep. You don't want lights. You don't want the radio blaring or TV playing. You want quiet and you want darkness. And so it's kind of out of that where people say, you know, worth two hours before midnight because once you start getting, excuse me, you know, get sleeping later, you're tending to wake later and it's lighter outside. Your body has this, like cortisol, you know, which people are afraid of because it's a stress hormone, it's what wakes you up. Right, so if you're trying to sleep and your cortisol is trying to go up, you know there's just the, this this mess going on, right? So if you have a good cycle, if you have the lights off, if you have signed up, you know go to sleep at midnight or 1 a.m. or 11 p.m. It's not going to make a big difference, but make sure your sleep quality is legitimate too. You know people sleep in front of the TV. I don't know how they do that because you know your brain is just receiving stimuli and it's not going to ignore it. Right? If somebody was to bang on your door, you're going to wake up. And so your brain is awake. It's processing that information. If you can't give it a break, I mean, then, you know, you're not really sleeping that well. Right. And are there any, um, like, if someone does have a hard time falling asleep and they just can't help, they just have a hard time getting sleep, um, are there supplements they can take to help make it easier to fall asleep or get a deeper sleep? Yeah. So there's two sides to that. So falling asleep would be melatonin. Uh, melatonin is the hormone your body produces anyway. Kind of as cortisol goes down, melatonin goes up, and it's what uh, helps you know put you to sleep. And you can take melatonin really safely. It's not addiction forming or anything like that. The tricky part about melatonin though is if you don't take enough, it might not do a lot. If you take in the right amount, you know it'll help you fall asleep. 
But if you take too much, it will actually not let you go to sleep. It will actually make you an insomniac because it's too much and, and your brain just kind of gets wired out of it. So, you know, usually when you buy pills, they come in three or five milligrams. So, you know, try one, let's say three milligrams, see how it goes. If it helps you fall asleep, fine. If not, then boost it to five or six, whatever. Kind of play around with it to get to, you know, the level that will put you to sleep. And, and then on the other side, in terms of sleep quality, that's where, you know, blackout curtains, not having sound stimulation, that's the best thing for sleep quality. Uh, there is a little bit of evidence that uh, lavender aromatherapy can help. So you sprinkle like a few uh, sprinkle, uh, drop a few droplets of lavender on your pillow, and theoretically, the, the smell, the aroma uh, therapy of it will actually help you know better quality sleep. Wow, uh, that's a Greg. You should you should uh, do a uh, lavender bubble bath. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's impressive, right? I have the lavender oil. Well, lavender oil is pretty awesome, but let's be honest, right? If you were to go to someone's bed and they're, you know, smelling like lavender and whatnot, that'd be kind of impressive, you know? You'd be like, yo, this guy takes care of his place. He doesn't need no pottery. He's got lavender. So you know, I'm kind of more impressed that way. Totally. So you're saying use lavender as like a, as a freaking deal sealer. I haven't said anything like that. I'm just saying it would might be impressive, but you know I make no uh, qualifications on that statement. It's like okay, so lavender in the bed, done, check. Um, okay, and 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 so let's get into um, I guess the final really interesting topic. What about like bedroom supplementation? What if you just want to like you know jack yourself up so you can like bang like you were when you're 16? Yeah, um, well, you know, that's when we talk about the testosterone boosters. Take that stuff. It works, you know. Uh, you know, Yohimbine, for example, is, you know, you, people use it to uh, burn more fat in the belly area, and it works if you are, you know, pretty lean, and it helps with erections. And there's actually a ton of supplements that will help with blood flow to your member. So, you know, look up libido uh, enhancers or boosters. Just search up libido on examine.com, and... You know, or look up testosterone boosters, and basically they're all libido uh, boosters. So you know, just deal with that, and you'll be fine. And so your yohimbine is like the uh, probably like the, the the real one, huh? Well, yohimbine is is known for that because that's what it was historically used as was uh, you know as an erectile aid. To be uh, technical about it, uh, the thing with you know uh, a thing with some of these is yohimbine, for example, makes you anxious. You know, it increases your anxiety, and some people get panic attacks. And, you know, as Canadians, your is not available to us, right? We can't really get it uh, for ourselves. So that's why I just said, you know, look up the libido or testosterone booster, look up libido, and there's a plethora of options. You know, that's really yeah. all there is. It's actually there. I'm, I'm looking at the uh, the new guide. At, I guess we'll talk about it in a couple minutes. But you've got a... There's a there's a big list in terms of uh, testosterone here. Yeah, it's uh, and it's one of those things where people love researching, right? I mean, Viagra was a mistake, but it's big business. You know, Cialis yeah. is a big business, and research tends to go where there's where there's money. So yeah, that, that stuff works. Yeah, and, well, what do you what do you think about um, DHEA? In terms uh, of DHEA is an interesting one, and it's metabolite seven ketone and all that. Uh, I think it has potential. It's also regulated in Canada, too, um, but uh, I don't have much of a comment. This is where I kind of refer people back to examine.com and, and see what we say. Uh, it could be potentially useful as a testosterone booster, as a virility agent, especially if you're older, and, and it's kind of lowering your body, but, you know, this is where context comes into play, and you got to figure out if it applies to what your goals are and, and you know, what you need out of life. Yeah, and, and well, one of the notes in the uh, in the guide was that it was really effective for uh, postmenopausal women uh, to get kind of their their well, mojo, there mojo you, back. No, there you go. You busted on yeah. on me that I did not remember or felt. So yeah. <laughs> so any postmenopausal women listening to this? this yeah, and oh, if you're also listening, you know, black cohosh is common for post -men for menopausal symptoms. It is ineffective, but if you look up Vetus angus castus, it is actually quite effective. So, you know, women, you're welcome. I have solved that. So, Greg, you need lavender and you need some Videx in your, in your bedroom. <laughs> you're welcome. Well, then here, let's, let's talk awesome. about that reference. So, um, Sol recently created this incredible resource. It's a supplement reference guide. And um, it's incredible it's... because you can, actually, you can actually look up, if you have any questions about a given supplement, if you're at the gym and 
your friend mentions uh, deer antler extract or, or something like crazy supplement. Um, you can look it up and you see what it's about. You can see what's going on there. Um, and if you have a health goal, if you want to, uh, for example, muscle building, fat loss, appetite suppression, um, testosterone boosting, um, blood flow, circulation, uh, energy, uh, you know, improving your, your brain functioning, if you trying to, if you have maybe some anxiety, and you're trying to, you know, um, I guess help improve that. They're literally, they're literally. I mean, how many, how many health goals um, is there? There's, there's a, a there's, there's like 180 now or 181. I mean, there's about 180. So you know, it's, it's quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's fantastic because you can just, you can just in seconds just click find the, the health goal you have, and then you have a, a, a several options. Um, you can see what they're if they have a positive um, effect um, or, or just neutral effect or negative effect, you can see, um, you can find the top supplements for, for your individual health goal. And so if you're spending like hundreds of dollars on supplements, this is something that will help save you way more money and time and frustration. Um, and it's, it's the, the time is huge too. Like one of the big, the coolest things about it is the, uh, you can like follow, you know, and look at the exact studies that you guys uh, reference that you used, so you can go to them and then it links straight to them, and, and that's like, like holy crap! In terms of time saving, like you're not in PubMed, you're not worrying about everything. It just kind of you see exactly what you base it on. Um, I know I'm used, you know, I'm writing a book on uh, natural testosterone boosting now, and it's like heck yeah, I'm using this <laughs> for that. You know, it's going to save me like a lot of time. Yeah, it must have taken a mass amount of time to compile all that. I couldn't I imagine. Yeah, uh, well, you know, we've been at it now for two and a half years. Uh, my partner, Curtis, he does the research. I pretty much take care of everything else, which is why I'm here, you know. I'm also much more handsome than him, than him so that's also kind of, you know, why I'm using front and center. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, basically, we've been at it for a while, and we have over 20,000 studies we've looked at. And the website's focus has always been from supplements to health goals, right? So you look at vitamin D and you find out what it does, what it doesn't do, bam, you're done. And so what this reference is is our attempt to kind of do the inverse, right? Where I keep harping on targeted supplementation because, you know, in certain ish, in instances things work and it, there's no reason why you shouldn't take it. And at the same time, there's a lot of sh stuff that doesn't work and, you know, you should look it up if it works for you or not. And it's even, even in a health context, right? So the easy example I always do when I talk about berberine, right, is, you know, if you're diabetic, you have to worry about your blood glucose. So, you, you know, you click on that, you find all the supplements that are listed, and there's the benefit, yeah, you know, you find out berberine has a very strong effect in lowering blood glucose. That's awesome. But at the same time, you can also learn which supplements have, you know, the effect of increasing it. You know, if you have high blood pressure, you definitely do not want to take anything that would be increasing your blood pressure, especially, you know, if you're anxious, really. Right? So you look it up and you see caffeine increases blood pressure. So you know if you're really stressed out and whatnot and you really desire a coffee, you know, it might make more sense to take some kind of you know, decaf frappuccino or decaf coffee or whatever because you know, there's no reason for you to put extra stress on your blood pressure. So it's kind of a way of figuring out uh, you know, what would be useful to you and what wouldn't be. And, and it, you know, again, it's applicable to different people in different ways. Right? I mean, I, I blew up my ACL a month ago, so, you know, joint pain, kind of healing and stuff like that is important to me. You know, uh, inflammation was a big thing for me. So I was taking more fish oil than, uh, I was actually taking fish oil for a while because, you know, it helps with inflammation and I wanted to make sure the swelling went down so healing got back into play. So, you know, it's it's a way of, uh, yeah, pretty much what you guys said, it's it's way to save money and figure out which supplements will work for you. And, and that's our basic pitch. Uh, I mean, and the other thing I do want to add is, uh, I'm pretty damn proud of this, is that we have a lot of glowing testimonials from a lot of, uh, you know, intelligent, well-respected people in the field. You know, we've been at it, like I said, for two and a half years. We've never pitched a product before. You go to our site, we don't really, you know, we've never sold a product of anybody's on our website. You know, even our Facebook page, whatever, we'll share interesting stuff, but we've never actually said, you know, buy this or buy that. So we worked really, really hard in kind of carving out our own niche, carving out our own space. You know, I mean, tooting my own horn, but I feel like we're pretty decently well respected. And you know, I think that kind of plays into what we built. That you can kind of trust information. Uh, some people a lot smarter than us, I will even admit, have you know looked over our data, have vetted our data, 
there's a lot of pedantic people. Uh, I'm going to call out Dr. Brian Chong. He's MD and PhD. And, you know, he will nitpick the littlest details on our site. And I'm happy because, you know, we want to be absolutely accurate as, you know, as we can be. And, I mean, he does peer reviewing, right? So that, that's kind of in his blood and whatnot. And, and, you know, we are very proud to have the support of these damn intelligent people because, you know, they're saying that we're neutral and we're independent. We don't sell supplements either. That's the other thing, right? There's no buy link in our guide. We're not sending you anywhere. There's no brand recommendations. There's no product recommendations. There's no upsell to a supplement line. We have no affiliation. We are 100% you know, separate. Um, and that's kind of why I got into that beautiful little story about my dating profile and all that is, you know, I have the advantage of because I am retired and, you know, I'm self-funded, I don't need to uh, generate that much money, right? I don't need to say, you know, guys, buy my stuff or throw ads on the site or whatever. You know, we are very happy in, in the little spot we are. And, you know, we're growing and, and I'm pretty damn proud of what we have accomplished in that much time. So, that's that. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Well, it's, it's, it's nice to like have that. Really, I mean, I th I think that's like super important for the for the fitness industry online because it's nice to be able to go to a place that you trust to look for information um, that has been vetted by a lot of people who like are respected in the industry and like you guys are really meticulous about it. So it's it's really nice to like have a resource for that. As even even PubMed, to be honest, like. When I dig through there, I'm very skeptical of a lot of uh, research because I've seen firsthand in school. I saw like how how biased a lot of um, research was and how poorly designed. So um, PubMed is very daunting, you know. When you get into full text and you have to analyze and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, you see that not all studies are made equal. Even their conclusions that they have on PubMed at times are not congruous with you know what their data shows. So you know. Yeah, which is that's like mind blowing. Uh, yeah. Something Absolutely. that shows up in the abstract is completely different than actual. Yeah, content. but I mean, it, it's what? it's like sensationalism in the media, right? I mean, they'll make yeah. up their titles because at the end of the day, right, they got to get paid, they got to keep doing more research, and they got to come up with conclusions. And if they don't, you know, people don't want to fund that stuff. They want to fund boring stuff. But unfortunately, we do need more of that. So you know, we try to be as independent, neutral, and even nuanced and conservative, right? If, if we rah rah any supplement, it's because. You know, it's pretty damn amazing. We would not do it otherwise. Right, and and so that's examine.com, yeah. um, and yeah, it's it's totally kick ass. Just, it's one thing to go on a site and to get information and recommendations from a site that's promoting some product, or linking you over to bodybuilding.com, um, but just to have a site that's just purely there, it's just for your own education, and they're not trying to profit off you. I mean, you know everything you're taking in. Is is legitimate. It's not, you know, it. It's definitely a very, very um, trustworthy and and uh, scientifically backed source. So, it's definitely really cool. Uh, thank you. If, if I wasn't so milk chocolatey, I swear I'd be blushing right now. But you know, my look, my so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't come to Poppers last night. You know, I'm sorry. Oh, I yeah, that too. Yeah, I was <laughs> bail. That was that was hurtful. That hurt. <laughs> you gotta come to my side of Toronto. We'll go to the, the Rose and Crown. Yeah, you live so far away, man. Downtown is, is central. But anyway, anyway, so. Well, yeah. Yeah, we, we well we all gotta to get together. I'm going up to Toronto, I, I guess, in like what in September, I think. So. I September. I wedding, it's right. Yeah. Weddings. Yeah. I'm at that wedding season age now, where I've I have six weddings this summer, and. What. I don't know if you've ever been to a, a brown wedding, an Indian Pakistani wedding, but that stuff goes on for days. Like I was the groomsman, and it was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Wow. And I only showed up for two days because it was literally the week where you know I blew out my knee. But even then, I mean, that stuff is intense. So, you know, I have my wedding days, but you come up, and we will definitely, definitely grab a drink or not. That will happen. Sounds good. Incredible. That's amazing. Um, any final, any final things that 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 uh, we should add here? It's been a you know supplementationally packed episode. Um, yeah, I mean, like if you ever notice anything wrong on our site, like please let me know. Uh, I, you know, I would rather be wrong and fix fix the stuff. Uh, I, I've told a few people, you know, we get ten thousand visitors a day, and and that's a real responsibility. You know, people are making buying decisions. They're making tough choices on their health because of what we write. And so if we are wrong. You know, I want to fix that. I, I again, this is not a money maker. This is not. I'm not like Jillian, whatever her name is, and selling DVDs and this kind of stuff, right? So, 
if we're wrong, like, please tweet or Facebook or link or email or harass these guys to harass me. Like, <laughs> I want that stuff to be accurate because it's, it's important. And you think, you think that any new crazy supplements are going to emerge? They're going to, like, you think there's a new creatine that's going to come out that's going to, like, you know, be better or anything uh, in the well, future? Well, I mean, as that vitamin K is gaining heat. Uh, I think stuff like Bacopa, especially, like, you know, from a nootropic perspective, is going to gain heat. Uh, you know, there's stuff like Agmatine that I mentioned that might, it's uh, the NO booster that might gain heat, but, you know, we honestly don't know. The problem with research or, you know, is that it's not just slow, right? It has to be replicated over and over before we can be confident. Creatine, we're definitely confident, but we've been researching that stuff since the 80s, right? We've, it's been 30 years of research. So, yeah, you know, uh, supplements is not something where something explodes. There's promise, but, you know, we'll see what, uh, you know, pans out in the next few years. That's cool. That's cool. So, uh, shit, guys, thanks for uh, having me and my uh, bushy playoff beard. And, uh, you know, I hope your uh, your viewers enjoy what we talked about. It was a little bit dense, but I hope it was informative at least. No, I mean, it was packed full of stuff. I'm going to, in the show notes, I'm going to put that uh, and, and grab, and true, grab a notebook. It's, and true story, um, Sol Orwell dubbed Chris and I as two of the best-looking guys in the fitness, uh, the, the online fitness world. <laughs> yeah. He, he said, said even better than Martin Burkhan. This is um, true. I said that they were two very good-looking dudes. I will, yeah. I will give them that. From one good-looking dude to two other good-looking dudes, <laughs> I'm willing to, you know, give that kind of title to you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, nice. Well, thank you. And, and I do think you have the best beard in the fitness industry. Oh, thank you, thank you. This I'm super jealous of that. I can't. I just forgot to shave in the morning, so it just kind of grew up over during the day. That's it. Uh, that's, that's ridiculous. And, and so, any any future plans you got going on um, outside of outside of the website and business stuff? Uh, in, I think I'm traveling, man. Uh, I'm always traveling. That's kind of why I retired and all that. I haven't been on a big trip for a while, so you know, hopefully, I'll be off to Europe soon. But that's about it. Right now, I'm just trying to get this damn product out. Um, um, you know, for the next two weeks I'm booked and I'm goose, but then I'm gone camping for a week, so you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens and how it pans out over the next few days. Okay, perfect. And for any girls yeah. listening, if they wanna they wanna go out with Saul Orwell, um, you can you can find him. You you could look for me. I, I am taken, but you know, <laughs> I I have my my uh, fangirls and and my stalkers and all that. So, you know, it's 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 okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> I still think they should ask. Whatever. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. And yeah. that was so Orwell of Examine.com. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Road Drippers. We'll have some more awesome episodes coming out soon. So take oh, care. Oh, also, Greg and I are having mics next episode. We got mics. Oh, mics. Nice. We got the new mics coming in, so our voices yeah. are going to sound a lot more... Uh, silky smooth is what I call it. Right. Silky That's smooth. Right. Silky smooth. All right, I look forward to hearing that. Like conditioner, right? Last one, not to get the silky smooth, but all right, I'll, I'll live with it. I'll live with it. <laughs>